the Open Public Meetings Law, which is taken on May the 10th, 2019. The notice of this meeting of the Upper Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bulletin Board, mailed to the Cape May County Gazette, the Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City Sentinel Ledger, the Herald Times, and filed with the Township Clerk. Tonight's meeting is being video recorded up until the closed session portion of this meeting and will be available on UTTV Channel 97 and on the Upper Township website. I hereby direct that this announcement be made a part of the minutes of this meeting. I would ask our Eagle Scout if you wouldn't mind to come up and lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance. Hey, come on up here and do your thing. Uh, please face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Don't go too far. Robert, call the roll, please. Mr. Barr? Here. Mr. Cox? Here. No, don't go too far. Mr. Corson? Present. Mr. Young? Here. Mayor Palumbo? Here. All members are present. Someone like to make a, mo a motion to approve the minutes from April 29th, the regular and closed session minutes. Motion Second. to approve. Second. So any corrections, deletions, omissions that anyone's aware of? Hearing none. Let's call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Mr. Barry, with all in favor? So we'll do the presentation this evening, um, honoring our Eagle Scout, Harrison, and, um, and then we'll come back to the uh, regular part of the uh, agenda. So um, Harrison, you want to come up, please? So Harrison uh, did his Eagle Scout project um, with our Beacon Animal Rescue and um, I'll read the resolution. Uh, it says, whereas Harrison Hepting of Troop 79 Seville, New Jersey, has recently achieved the designation of Eagle Scouts and the Boy Scouts of America. The Township of Upper wishes to acknowledge this outstanding accomplishment of this remarkable young man. The Township Committee extends its sincere congratulations to Harrison on the occasion of his receiving the designation of Eagle Scout and commends him for this outstanding accomplishment and the completion of his Eagle Scout project, which consisted of renovating the Beacon Animal Rescue Cat Room, making it more functional and easier to maintain. Whereas, with the assistance of fellow troop members, friends, and family, Harrison remodeled the inside cat room by removing the tile floor and painting the underlying concrete floor, painting all the walls, installing a new cabinet with countertop in the closet, building stackable cat bed boxes, and installing paneling in the outdoor section. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Township Committee extends its sincere congratulations and best wishes to Harrison's parents, family, and friends who are here. Um, and uh, we also would like to extend our congratulations and appreciation to the Scoutmasters and others uh, in the troop who gave so freely and generously of their time and for the benefit of our youth. So, um, congratulations, Harrison. That's a great... Appreciation. Thank you. And, it, and uh, you know, I, I, the animal, uh, Beacon Animal Rescue is a, is a great opportunity to rescue animals. Um, they're not, in, they're a no-kill shelter, um, and this township committee has supported them in any way we can. Um, in fact, the building is, is the township's building, and, and we do all the repairs and everything that needs to be done as well. So that project um, that Harrison did um, would be a great asset and go a long way to the continued um, support and the continued opportunity to have uh, the stray cats that are in the, in the uh, shelter restaurant. So, thank you again. Thank you for joining us. Did you get a picture? Yeah, thank you very much. Well no, you want to take away, man? Come on, one more. Come on, dude, this is a big deal. You get a picture? <laughs> Okay, thank you. Actually, you're welcome to stay, but you're also welcome to go because I'm sure you've got homework and things to do. Better things.
So, Scott, do you have anything for us this evening? Yes, good evening, Mayor uh, and committee members. Um, I have a few things this evening. Uh, just a couple reports to update committee. Uh, over the last two weeks, our Public Works Department uh, has completed uh, brush and loose leaf uh, collection, uh, and actually specifically as of the end of last week, uh, that was both of those projects were completed. They went twice through the township. Um, and just to remind the uh, residents that uh, brush will next uh, be collected in October and loose leaf uh, will be collected mid-November uh, through late December. And more specifics about these pickups um, and our compost and all the other uh, collection, bag collections that we do, in addition to bulk and your regular trash and recycling, can be found on our Upper Township website. Uh, just as a reminder, that is all listed. Um, a couple projects that uh, have been requested um, by uh, uh, Mayman uh, Young. Um, we took a look at the flagpole lighting uh, at Amanda's Field. Um, and I know Mike Jones is in the process of getting a quote for us for an additional light uh, for that uh, flag to better illuminate it for the uh, American flag and also the POW flag that are flown there. Uh, so that quote should be in, uh, I anticipate, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, another project that uh, we had requested or was requested of our Public Works Department was the uh, carpenter shop um, uh, to basically maintain it a little better and bring it up to uh, current standard. Um, uh, they have painted the facility and gone through and uh, done some uh, very nice carpentry work to uh, clean the entire facility up uh, and the gutters around the building so uh, it looks more presentable. Um, so I think they did a great job there. Um, we're uh, currently undergoing our uh, street sweeping. Uh, that has resumed throughout the township and includes Strathmere. Um, summer preparation for Strathmere is underway. The new Moby mats uh, will soon be installed. Um, we had an issue this week with our skid steer um, that is, is part and parcel of the installation of these Moby mats, uh, but uh, uh, that is being corrected and we hope to uh, start that process either late week uh, or early next week. Um, <clears throat> uh, the uh, grading of uh, Tyler Road has been completed, Well uh, Creek Marina. Um, and the Webster Avenue playground uh, after the uh, correction of a, a collapsed storm drain that unfortunately was almost right in the center of Webster Avenue playground itself um, was corrected with the assistance of uh, Paul and his contacts down at the uh, Cape May County um, engineer, uh, Engineering Department. Um, they were able to come up and uh, with a vendor, an outside vendor, um, provide uh, the service of replacing a section of that, um, of that storm drain, um, which precluded having to dig up the entire length of it. Um, there was a section that uh, uh, has been replaced and uh, um, it, it did create some other issues um, that some of the residents there may have seen because um, we were just about ready to finish the project. Um, and as a result of that, we had to move the swing set, the brand new swing set that we put in there. Um, and we also had to relocate um, and actually replace some of the um, six by six uh, ties that, that were placed there to separate the mulch area and the playground area from um, a beach sand uh, area that was uh, originally designed to go in there. But all that work has been completed. Um, we were going to start the mulching today, but because of the weather, that postponed things, but we're hoping to have the mulch uh, uh, filled into the areas where uh, all of our uh, new um, uh, bushes and, and trees that we planted there at the end of last season, uh, we're gonna you know, start bringing those back this year. So uh, we should have a nice facility uh, come Memorial Day. That's, uh, uh, that's what our goal is. Um, <clears throat> the uh, community center phase two lighting project uh, with our LED replacements is underway. Um, we've submitted a uh, purchase order and uh, also the paperwork to the state uh, for the reimbursement process. Uh, so we hope to start installation and, and receive the, uh, the new lights um, by the end of this month, if not the beginning of ne next month. The uh, paperwork process is uh, uh, sometimes that delays the project. We found this out in, in phase one, uh, but we got our paperwork done a little bit earlier this time, so uh, we're hoping to hold to that timeline. Um, 
Uh, our roadside mowing has started uh, throughout the township. That, of course, was a little delayed uh, due to uh, uh, the rain that we've been experiencing. Um, and, uh, and as far as uh, uh, Department of Public Works interviews, we started our, uh, conducting those this past week with uh, the assistance of Committeeman Barr uh, and our new uh, personnel officer, Sharon, uh, and, uh, and also Rhonda. Um, so uh, we have uh, uh, selected uh, uh, one in particular, and I'll let Committeeman uh, uh, Barr uh, further elaborate on that as we move forward. Um, we also had uh, interviews uh, for a full-time EMT position for our EMS division, um, and I'll let uh, Committeeman Corson uh, further elaborate on that later. Um, I think that's it for uh, public works. Um, and as far as emergency management is concerned, uh, I think I reported at our last meeting about our EMAA 2019 uh, pass-through grant. It's a $10,000 grant that we've been receiving for the past uh, four years. Uh, our preliminary application, which they consider a questionnaire, um, has been accepted. Um, and we, we are required uh, as a funded municipality to meet many different criteria throughout the year um, and we've met all that those criteria so we are now permitted to move uh, to the actual application process which I hope to have prepared for you for the next meeting and I believe that is all I have okay thank you mm -hmm. Barbara not much just one thing, uh, our next meeting uh, will be held on Tuesday instead of Monday, uh, May 28th at 7.30 p.m. That's because all Because we are closed because for Memorial Day. Because we are closed for Memorial Day, yes. Okay. That's Daniel. No, nothing at this time, but we have, do have a couple items. For <coughs> Paul. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to report on the uh, paving over, the utility paving over in Strathmere. I present a committee with a... Uh, uh, a map of the different streets that will be uh, resurfaced uh, based on the uh, extensive construction activities that both the water company and South Jersey Gas uh, performed over the winter time. Uh, I met with them last week to kind of go over their schedule. They're hoping to uh, have their contractor in either before Memorial Day or probably one of the first two weeks of June. Um, they're still trying to work out the final contractor. Uh, they're trying to coordinate their work together. Uh, that was one of my focuses of the meeting so that they're not duplicating efforts and or you know hodgepodging around there's actually seven full streets that will be uh, resurfaced in Strathmere and 11 half uh, streets meaning that there's to be 11 streets that they'll pave from the center line to the curb uh, you know so it'll be a full half width of the of street so they're not doing small little patch areas they're, they're going to be completing some full areas so we'll have a nice better restoration of the work uh, that has been done over the winter time. Will they be doing all the notifications? Uh, we will be putting out, um, you know, obviously we'll put out information on our website as we find it. Uh, we'll also do some email notification to some of the uh, organizations, the civic organizations over there. And then as the, as the contractor gets closer, they will do door hangers um, uh, to the residents that are, that are over there. Uh, obviously, as we move closer, uh, if, you know, from Memorial Day afterwards, they, you know, they, they won't be working on Fridays and those kind of things, just in anticipation, obviously, as the summer gets closer, you know, more activity is occurring over there, so we'll try to uh, not inconvenience the residents, you know, that are coming down on the weekends and have it cleaned up if they are working there. So when do they anticipate this being done? It will be done before the second week in June. They're still trying to coordinate which day, but, you know, as you see the weather, keeps pushing, you know, so as their jobs that, you know, the paver's currently working on, you know, keeps getting pushed, they, they're trying to find that right spot in their schedule that they can do this work. And as you see, there's a lot of streets that, uh, that need to get paved. Where do we stand with the, with the, uh, the striping with the county? I believe, I forgot to get an update because they haven't posted it, whether or not they've awarded their contract or not. Um, so I don't know the exact status. Uh, I didn't hear back from uh, the county engineer today to, to be able to give you an update, but um, you know, they, they, they felt pretty confident to be able to have something completed by the 21st of June. That, okay. That's their time frame. So this won't have any impact on the street? No, the, our streets, you know, the, the striping plan is all done on 
the Commonwealth section, you know, on the county road section, so there would be no interference of this paving out onto the county roads. Are they going to do the north end first? I don't know what what their schedule will be as far as which streets do, they will do, but all of the streets, as you see, highlighted on that map. And this map, I have put our this map is already available on the web, you know, on a link from my uh, the road construction section on the township website. Uh, you know, all the streets will be done by before the middle of June. They're going to have to get it done by the middle of June. Yes. They won't be able to move because there'll be trains and people are just going to leave cars there. They're not going to be Correct. able to figure out. They, they've committed to get the work done by then. <coughs> uh, the, the next thing I want to do, this is the season for um, when you'd normally have, we would have sprayed for gypsy moss spraying. And I just wanted to kind of give the committee a reminder and the residents that uh, there are no uh, significant populations of gypsy moss in the township. We do have a, a page up on the, uh, our web page talking about gypsy moss and, and what are, you know, what caterpillars are gypsy moth caterpillars and which ones are typically the bagworms of what most residents are seeing come up now. Um, but I just wanted to put the reminder out there for the public that there, that there was no uh, gypsy moth <coughs> spraying for this year. The inspections were actually, would have been completed back in uh, the fall of last year. Uh, also this afternoon, myself and uh, Scott Morgan had a phone conversation um, with Ocean City regarding uh, applying for a resiliency grant with the Department of Environmental Protection. If you recall, last year we applied for this grant as part of the um, New Jersey Coastal Coalition as a group of probably eight communities within Cape May County. Um, we did not receive that grant um, as part of that uh, group. Uh, in talking with Ocean City, uh, we kind of collectively felt that maybe a smaller group, uh, so we're looking at possibly Ocean City, Upper Township, and Seattle City combining uh, to submit an application as a group. Uh, so if, if the committee is inclined to do so, we would have to uh, agendize a resolution at our next committee meeting to um, authorize the submittal of that resiliency grant as part of uh, um, a joint effort with the three communities and Ocean City has agreed to take on the prime uh, lead on that job uh, through the grant application, which really means they're going to put out the effort to uh, um, make the actual application on the computer system and, and then they'll list Seattle and Upper Township as participants and co-applicants. Now will those, the other two municipalities have to do the same type of resolution? Yes. Yes, they will. So can you work with the other? Second to place it on the next agenda. Yeah, but I would say you know work with Ocean City and see so that we you know, don't have to recreate it. We, we can just keep it all the same. So. And that's all I had to see. Thank you. Okay, Committee McCoggins. Nothing to see to Mr. Mayor. Committee Min Young. A few things here, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> On Saturday, May 25th, we'll be having a historical society. We'll be having the 30th annual Strawberry Festival at the Gandhi Farmhouse, uh, 26 Tyler Road. Everybody invited. Uh, a lot of good treats and eats there. So uh, come on out and support that. Um, we're in, started working on our plans for the 4th of July. I met with Barb and Larry the other day. We got quite a bit accomplished as far as uh, getting things set up and ready to go. Um, that will be on the 4th, and it will be from 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock with fireworks, approximately 9.30. Scott, you answered my question on Webster Avenue. Um, uh, I've had conversations with Scott and Roy, uh, Johnny Adams, about the conditions in the fields. Have we heard from True Green, or is there... Uh, uh, I know John is working with them. He's talked to them uh, as far as when they're coming out. I don't think that's been established yet, but it may very well be this week. All right, let's see if we can push that because the longer we wait, the more the weeds are overtaken. And, and I did express that to and John. It's all, it's all of our fields with the exception of Tuck Out. Yes. Um, and again, I want to get together um, and make sure that we're on a solid schedule for winter fer or fall fertilizer and seeding to be done in September, October. Part of the problem is we've been seeding in December. And from what I hear, we lose about 70% of the seed we put down. And that was also discussed. That's a major issue. John and um, so again, I just, 
see what we can do as, as quickly as we can. Um, coming in, I noticed one of the lights around the clock tower on the top, to eliminate the top of it. So if we can take care of that. Um, the other question I have is, uh, we've been talking about landscaping, and I'm wondering you know, where we are with that, and if not, are we going to get on our, ourselves and get some flowers planted and, and do different things out here to clean the front? Uh, Paul and I have been working uh, together with, uh, to prepare a, a spec uh, for, uh, to go out the bid for, um, for just that, um, and uh, uh, we are actually uh, used one from Avalon, uh, and we're having uh, Roy and uh, uh, John put together our specifics relative to the different facilities that we have, and uh, something similar to the one vendor that you had suggested, um, and, but actually we expanded upon it a little bit too. Do so we have any time frame and we'll be ready to wrap for this? Um, well, we're, we're kind of missing the spring planning for it. Yeah, I mean, all in all, I don't think it's going to be ready uh, as far as the bidding process until probably uh, till fall. Uh, then can we get our guys to the grounds and let them get some flowers planted and dress up the front here a little bit? Sure. All right. Um, the other thing we talked about possibly taking uh, some of the money from the bond and utilizing it for uh, LED digital signboards for Amanda's possibly here and out there. So uh, we're waiting for uh, a couple of the companies to come back to us on that. And uh, yeah, then one of the biggest things is if we go Wi-Fi, that ups the price pretty good. Um, if not, you have to have somebody go there and actually do it on site. So we're trying to get all those together. We're gonna have to have specs prepared and have to be bid, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, also, uh, just so everybody's aware, the, uh, our Pumpkin Classic uh, car show will be on September the 28th this year. So we're looking for volunteers for 4th of July and the car show. Anybody would like to help can contact the clerk's office. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Deputy Mayor Barr. Okay. As uh, Mr. Morgan stated earlier, we had uh, interviews for uh, the laborers' position that we had advertised. And as a result of those uh, interviews, uh, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we um, consider John Mitchell for the hire up as a laborer for Park Works. No second that. Before you do that, do you think we should speak about the specific terms of the employment and it also requires a resolution, a uh, formal resolution? So if you want to change your motion to put a resolution on the next meeting, we can do that if that's what you're looking for. You got it, Daniel. Okay. <laughs> And, and uh, this is an Upper Township resident? Yes. Yes. Okay. I see I have a first and a second. Is there any other discussion? Let's call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Longo? Yes. Motion is carried. And that's it, sir. Meeting in course and thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have anything at this time, but I believe I have one item for personnel that's probably mimicking Dan's. Okay. The only thing I have this evening, I'm kind of happy to report that, um, as you well know, on the committee and, and Barbara works with us, um, there is an opportunity for someone in the township to um, put in an essay about what the local government means to them. And it's an opportunity to win a scholarship. It's called the Future Municipality Leader Scholarship. Um, we've had people that have um, submitted in the past and have gotten honorable mention, but um, this year I'm happy to report that we actually have a winner. Um, Evan Michael Holmes um, was selected as one of the three statewide winners um, in this, uh, it's called Lewis Bay, uh, future municipal, uh, municipal leader scholarship competition. There were 40 municipalities that submitted essays from uh, various um, individuals in, in their community. Um, and uh, this, well, ours, uh, our uh, contestant, Evan Michael Holmes, um, was, was one of the winners. Um, uh, Barbara and I uh, usually screen the essays that are brought forth and the one that we feel, you know, does the best we submit. And um, I'm happy to report that, that he won. Uh, so what I'd like to do is um, we have a we sign the resolution. We'll present this to him 
um, on uh, 528, and he gets a thousand dollar scholarship for that. So it's pretty good. So congratulations to Evan Michael Holmes. So that's all I have. Okay, so one of the things I just want to bring up uh, the beach, Beasley's Point parking lot. I was down there last week. Still equipment parked all over the place, and it's really rugged up. Is there any week? Are they going to fine grade that for us? And I wouldn't want to put a boat down there right now myself. They're, I mean, they're in the process. They've been trying to get the work done to re repave that area down there, I imagine. I think they're planning, I think, uh, so they're going to come in next week, early part of the week, can to they do some work. Can they maybe grade the parking lot off? I'll, I'll, I'll in get in touch with them, see if they can. Thank you. So I believe we'll have boat attendance there, but we're not going to have that beach protected as yet. That won't be till closer to the end of June. We're only going to have four beaches protected in Strathmere uh, for the Memorial Day weekend, and that will be for Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Um, and then the, the actual full-time um, lifeguards will be in place. I believe it's June 8th is when they're going to start doing that. So they'll be there on weekends and they'll be doing work and probably doing at least some emergency um, availability for the alert call that they call. Um, and then uh, as we gradually get into the summer season, we'll have more protection of the beaches. So. Okay. Very good. All right, item number two under resolutions, congratulating Evan Michael Holmes on his winning essay in the Lewis Bay Second Future Municipal Leader Scholarship Competition. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Blondo? <clears throat> yes. Motion is carried. Three, appointing the Upper Township Green Team Advisory Committee. Move the resolution. Second. Roll the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Four, adopting the Township of Upper Beach Management Plan for the beaches in Strathmere and Whale Beach section of Upper Township for the protection of federally and state listed species. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? <coughs> yes. Motion is carried. Five, authorizing the performance of a road condition survey. Road condition survey in the amount of $7,100 with funds from the 2018 Capital Improvement Bond Ordinance. Before you act on this, um, there are uh, a couple of provisions uh, of the contract that we asked to be amended. We expect them, uh, those provisions to be approved by the, uh, the vendor. Um, so if the motion would include um, uh, review and approval of the final contract by the solicitor, that would be great. I'll make that in the form of a motion. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Wilson? <coughs> yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Plumbo? Yes. <coughs> Item number six, authorizing the award of a contract with alternative micrographics for document management <coughs> software and document scanning services. Motion to authorize. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Fox? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Motion's carried. Seven, authorizing the award of a contract with Sanitation Equipment Court for Automated Parks. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? <coughs> yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Motion's and, and Scott, do we anticipate having some of these mobile mats in place for Memorial Day? I, I think they were, they were out there today starting to prep the areas and I think once the um, skid steer gets uh, back up in operation, which I understand should be shortly should be this week, uh, yeah. that we'll yeah, start we'll to work. that work. Okay, great. Eight, authorizing the award of a contract with Access Rec LLC for mobile beach access maps. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Nine, authorizing a contract with Lawrence Truly for media consultant services. Motion to authorize. Second. Can we have a discussion on this? Sure. Um, in reading the contract, um, a few things came up in my mind that uh, I've talked to Dan about and Scott about. Um, one of the things, uh, 
in the description. It says prepare promotional materials for township events and activities. It's kind of vague. Um, our clerk's office, uh, Barb and Larry, do all the promotional events for all the special events. Um, I think we need to take a look at this and make sure that we have the job description pretty clear with what the duties will be and to what effect. Um, you know, I, I don't want to see more than more hands in the soup here than we need to. And uh, I, I just want to make sure you know, even to protect Larry on this, that, you know, uh, that we have everything written down and itemized the best that we can. The, the contract can be amended. Um, However, uh, the way it's written currently is that the outside media consultant doesn't uh, produce anything unless it's approved by the right. township Council. administrator. Right. So there is a check on whether or not it's duplicative or extra or contradictory to what happens and what's produced in-house. That would be something that I guess your management team would be expected to handle. Uh, beyond that, uh, unless you're just going to say no, they're not doing any promotional materials for these certain areas. Um, but I need that that language because I was told he was a general media consultant, so we need that direction. Yeah, again, my the concern contract. is again more hands in the mix, more approvals in the mix, and a lot of times we're down to final minutes trying to get an ad in the newspaper. If somebody's out sick or on vacation, I just don't want. I don't think it was more. It, it wasn't. It, it wasn't designed to advertise the Fourth of July as fireworks. No, it's, it's designed not, to. It's, it's to say activities that are going on in the township, things that unfortunately aren't being reported in the newspapers and those kind of things at this point. Not everyone has access to the computers, and we feel that the communications throughout everybody, the entity, the entire group of the, of the residents is important. So we, we are, we're doing a lot of work online with our website. We're doing a lot of work, um, you know, through the visuals that we have here. And then we're, this is going to supplement um, some other opportunities. And again, my well. concern is that Barb's office does quite a bit of it. And I want to make sure we're on the same page as who is supposed to be doing what. And that will happen. It's well, going to contradict this all. I think it needs to be clearer in this contract myself. Okay. Well, the contract can be amended as we see if there's a problem or a referral. Uh, like I said, uh, I'm, I need direction if you're going to try and divide the work up as to who does what. I, I need specific direction. As it stands now, the township administrator decides who does what yeah. I mean, under I, this contract. I, I mm -hmm. think the clerk's office should be involved in making sure that this is done properly for them, that there's no you know, indecision on who's supposed to do what and that they have the authority to take certain steps that Larry will have. But I think it needs to be put in the contract. I, I'm comfortable with what the contract says right now. I don't know about my colleagues, but I, I think this is a, a new opportunity, something that's going to probably evolve. And we're certainly cognizant of the work that's being done in the municipal clerk's office. I don't think anybody's looking to, to uh, change any of that. So, you know, I mean, that's up to my colleagues here, but yeah. I, I'm and comfortable with it. I work closely with right. Scott on a daily basis, so. Certainly I think it'll work together. out. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a motion and there's a second. So call the roll, please. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? I'm going to abstain. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried with four in favor and one abstention. Okay. All right, moving on. Item number 10. Authorizing an affiliation and medical direction agreement with the Atlanta Care Regional Medical Center for basic life support and ambulance services. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 11, appointing the 2019 season boat ramp attendance. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Corson, I'm sorry. Yes. Mayor Clough? <laughs> yes. Motion is carried. Getting ahead of myself. Item number 12, amending resolution number 132, 2019, appointing the 2019 season beach patrol contingent upon background clearance. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 
13, authorizing the Upper Township 4th of July celebration event to be held on July 4th, 2019 at Amanda's Field and setting the vendor and participant fees. Move the resolution. Second. <clears throat> Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Cotton? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 14, authorizing the Upper Township Pumpkin Classic Car Show and Fall Fest to be held on September 28, 2019 at Mandis Field and setting the admission, vendor, and participant fees. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. And, and Barb, if I could just uh, let everyone know too that Larry's already notified all sports programs uh, from your yes, office. Yes, that's part of the, the list of items. Back, oh, about the black be done, so. yes. Item number 15, appointing Ronald Rain and Eric Kajar as part-time seasonal beach sweepers for the Upper Township Public Works Department. Motion to appoint. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 16, authorizing the Mayor and Township Engineer to sign and submit a development application to the New Jersey Pinelands Commission for the construction <coughs> of Iroquois Trail. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? <clears throat> yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 17, appointing additional 2019 season beach patrol personnel. Move, Move the resolution. Re Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Barb, I have one thing. Um, number 11. I understand we were down a person or whatever for the uh, ramp attendance? Yes, that, that position has been advertised for oh, okay, by our personnel, and we're looking for an additional attendant. You answered that question. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Item number 18 under ordinances. Introduction and first reading of ordinance number 9, 2019, and ordinance amending ordinance number 21, 2018, known as the salary ordinance for the calendar year 2019. And this is the introduction, and uh, if we could uh, move forward with this, the public hearing will be on June 10th. I'll make a motion to introduce ordinance number 009-2019. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. The motion is carried. Item number 19 under new business. See the Future Learning Center. Request the use of the Upper Township Community Center for a graduation ceremony on June 14, 2019. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. The motion is carried. 20, the Historical Preservation Society of Upper Township <coughs> requests the use of Gandhi Farm for the annual Strawberry Festival of May 25th, 2019, with a rain date of May 26th, 2019. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 21, Demetrius Chopopoulos requests to purchase township owned land, Block 348. Lot 55. Paul? Yes, this is a very uh, narrow, small, vacant lot. It's actually, it's up in Tucko. It's actually across the street from the uh, Tucko Volunteer Fire Company. Uh, probably about six or seven years ago, uh, there was an old garage that the township demolished that was on the site. Uh, we have no real use for that property. Uh, the requester has purchased the property adjacent to it and just looking to uh, clean up the property because of the, the narrowness of his property you know that they, they almost use some of the township property for part of their driveway because there's really not a lot of driveway access on the side of the house so they're just he's just looking to uh, add that to part of his property he understands there are normal township condition conditions of consolidating uh, the property in the in the process now has was there an adjoining neighbor, uh, neighbor on the other two side two other adjoining neighbors so it'll be and one to the rear so. three of them yeah paul is that the vacant part where a lot of people park there for functions at the fire house they occasionally do yes i mean it's not very functional i mean you, you can usually maybe get three or four across there 
depends if you want to stack them in that yeah I'm just I was just you know, we're at a minimum down there for any, any events going on so well it's not really enough for any event right. parking now oh, okay and typically like even like when the fire company holds like a um, their pancake breakfast they usually don't really park in there they're usually but the bank they're parking parallel yeah, parking they park, the bank, they, they park on the street you know parallel park on the street and don't really pull into there too I mean they you'll get some that go in there but not okay you're not gonna get a lot I'd like to make a motion we proceed with this. Right. It will require an ordinance. Yes. Yes. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 22 under discussion <clears throat> NJDOT correspondence regarding the pedestrian crossing at Route 50 and Reading Avenue. Paul? Um, yeah, we received. Based on the request about putting in uh, those uh, pedestrian hawking light uh, up at the uh, crossing on Route 50 in, in Tuckahoe, uh, you know, they've come back and you know, before they begin the, the engineering study to determine warrants and you know, their typical insulation costs, they're looking for around $100,000. It does seem like it is $100, high. $100,000 for put blinking? Well, it's it would be two it would be two lights. I mean, it's the engineering study. It's it's the whole host of events, and it's probably six months to do it. And it's also you know there's it's not just a a flashing light. I mean, it has sensors to you know push buttons for you know when pedestrians approach. I still got to believe ninety thousand of us for how much of is it for shower the wages? Do you think is soft costs half? Probably. So it's probably half construction, half profession. And, and when you look at the actual you know. You know, when you go and price these out for what the DOT installs them for, you know, their overhead that they have to, when they hire a contractor, their overhead and what they get contractors to do things are at a much higher overhead rate, both of what they purchase the equipment for and uh, what they install it for just for the, from their contractor base I mean, compared I, to what a private citizen can, you know, install I, type I, of similar things. My personal opinion is it's a lot of money, but it's not, it's, it's we're putting value on human life here. I mean, it's a matter of time before somebody gets hit or seriously injured or killed there. I, I don't argue with that. My problem is, is if they're doing this kind of, you know, um, surveys and everything, the preliminary work that they do, I, you know, we, we want to try and get it done the sooner than, than later. And th this could take a year if, if they're going to put that much time into it. That's Maybe probably if it's fast track. Who they designed they the downtown center to begin with? That's what I was saying. The they DOT. DOT. So they should have all the services so on that. What we did, what we're going to do, this is going to be a learning process for us, so that when we have a project like this, and we put, put a pedestrian walkway in there, you know, we're going to have to uh, dot our eyes across our T's with them because it should have been addressed during regular construction. In the meantime, can't we put the signs up that say pedestrian crossing? It's a state, even though it's a state highway or state road, it's a state statute that requires it anyway. That's correct. I um, mean, if, they still if have we, to only the DOT technically can place uh, signage within the DOT right away. I mean, if you did. Well, you know, I think I think we should be challenged and we should put some of those pedestrian walk signs out there and let them question it. Because it's a state statute that requires it. And well, if they right want to argue, we'll tell them to go back to the legislature and have a change. I have a letter, or a hard copy of the letter was sent to us. Uh, Traffic initiated investigation, and if necessary, we'll reach out to the township. They're actually, regarding installation of signs, they are initiated as an investigation. That being said, I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out you need a, a signing job. Uh, but the, the investigation has started, according to this letter that I have. But the letter but really just asked to you to commit to the twenty-five thousand dollar, twenty-five percent funding. If, if they decide, I mean, if it, if they just decide to put up static signs, there would be no cost. To no, attempt. I'm saying we should do that. I understand. I'm just now. I'm just looking at, and we'll still vote for the twenty-five thousand that needs to be incorporated in this. To be on the another side? summer's going to go by, and all the traffic on fifty. So let's put the signs up. Do we have the ability to make them and, and meet New Jersey Department of Highway Inspectors? We, we can probably have to purchase buy them. them. They're just like but my concern is rich, and I'm not saying if we put the signs up, all authorized, they're going to remove the signs. They're going to be put in a dumpster and thrown away, and then some another taxpayers going to have to pay for more signs. So I mean, I, I'm not saying that it needs to be done. Don't get me wrong, but it needs to be done properly. 
I understand that, but I think we should at least make an effort and let them question it and hope that they'll say, well, you're not allowed to put the signs up and they'll give us the signs back <coughs> someplace else. But oh, I'm not opposed to In the, the meantime, up, you know, I mean, I, I, we, we need to make a, a you know, if, you, if you're willing to support the amount of funding that comes from our end, we, we'll move forward with it. But I also think we need to do, besides that, well, in the interim, put some signs up. If we're going to do that, I recommend that we respond that we're willing to fund the $25,000. We're willing to come up with that. But in the meantime, since you're initiating the study, we're going to put the signs up. I would put them on notice that we're putting the signs up. So, with so or without their. We'll have Dan draft a letter, <laughs> okay, that states the statute that requires, you know. The, the, the statute also says it's their road and they, can, they have solved jurisdiction that's over right. it. So well, that's going to be a little difficult for us to say we have the right to put the sign. Well, I'm not saying we have a right to do it. I'm just telling them we're, we're doing it. I understand. <laughs> I, I suspect that it would be better to tell them we agree, but in the meantime, we may place signs up for pedestrian safety. And, and then yes. see what happens to it in a softer approach rather than, frankly, I, I haven't looked at the statute, but I'm pretty sure it. It's, it, it preempts any local action. Yeah, we can't, probably can't legally do it, but that being said, I think we, I, we need to do it. I, I concur, and I don't even know if the statute requires, the statute only requires a sign if you want to prosecute, you know, as a state police or a local police wants to enforce and write tickets based on uh, the statute. There has to be signage to, to notify pedestrians of a crosswalk, but I don't believe there's anything in the statute that, that requires signage at all crosswalks because there are thousands of crosswalks that don't have signage next to them so it's uh, the signage is more dictated to when you when the a police force wants to enforce the statute and write tickets for the motoring traffic uh, not i'd say the, the signs are typically put up when there's more traffic than usual yeah. So when you go to Ocean City, they put the signs up in the summer. You go over to Strathmere, our signs are up in the but summer. But those aren't state roads. I, I understand that. But that doesn't mean that we should make an effort because the downtown is a little unique in that there's a state road that goes right through it. And they, they, have, they have them in Courthouse. They have them in Mullica Hill. I mean, both state highways. 45 goes through Mullica yeah, Hill. Yeah, they've got right in front of uh, courthouse. the courthouse. Yes. So I use... Mayor, I did have some conversation with uh, Lieutenant Henry, the Barracks Commander from New Jersey State Police. Um, I told him of the potential discussion that we have had in the past uh, regarding put placing signs out there. Um, I, I guess the subject is, or, or the concern is, the type of sign that's going to be used. For instance, the suggestion was uh, that we use a similar sign to the ones that they use over in Strathmere that we place there on the roadway to slow and recognize pedestrian crossing. Um, the concern is that that particular area is on a bend um, and the concern that was registered by Lieutenant Henry was the fact that if one of those units was struck and sent into oncoming traffic, um, there, there could be additional issues there and potentially, um, and I'll leave this to the solicitor, but potentially liability on the township's part if we would have created that type of an instance. Could, so, we, move it, could we move it down? Yeah, is there a better place I, we could I, put I this crosswalk than on it? Well, that was, that was an alternative suggestion as well, but then we get into back into the engineering study as far as placement. But, but just by well. what you said, there's a bend there, they, the cars may not see it. Yeah, there's common, a bend there common they sense would tell you to not cross. do that. Correct. You know, I mean, what you I mean, just said is, is all the reason why we need to put something up there because there's a bend and there's a crosswalk there. Yeah, there's no, um, one of the, it's a concern. There, there's a definite concern there. One of the biggest problems in Tucko, and, and the, the state police have done a great job in the last couple of months, is, is the speeding. And they've been set up there on a regular basis and they've actually written a lot of tickets, I believe. Or at least a lot of warnings. Well, and, and, that, that's, and, that's and that's to be commended. Yes. But... And right now we have normal traffic. Come so Memorial Day, 50 is going to be backed up for miles. And that's actually good because we won't have speeding, then oh, people can actually cross. I don't know that. I'm <laughs> not. Well, how about you? Barbara could answer that better because she's in Tucker. People can't get out. Well, how about if we just make the motion that we're going to uh, support the financial end of this study, and on our end, we'll direct the engineer to figure out. Come up with a plan as far as where the best location would be to put signs. 
and, and perhaps we could enter a dialogue with our contacts at the DOT yeah. to see if there's an interim yeah. signage that we could put up short of this yeah. full. And I think that they've they've indicated. I think they've indicated that in their letter that that's what that's they what are I mean, looking at. If we could expedite that, I think that probably would address your concerns okay. mostly. All right. So there's the a there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Let's call the roll. Mr. Barr. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mr. Corson. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Mayor Palumbo. <coughs> yes. And Ms. actually, on this note too, there's actually the same. Barbara Young got this in the office today, and I'm sure Paul's going to get a copy of it. Yeah. There's a municipal aid program for grant money. So we could probably find our $25,000 copay into one $151 million that they're trying to give away to municipal aid. <laughs> we'll do what we, we can. And there, are some, there are grants out there for pedestrian safety. So. That's what it says. It's, what it says. It's, it's, this is for bikeways, streetscapes, and pedestrian safety. You got it. It's, it's highlighted. I, I don't disagree with that, what it says, but I would. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't feel hold your highly breath. unlikely that, that if we apply for a $25,000. A grant to the DOT to pay for that one set of signs that you're going to receive funding for that. I would make recommendations that, you know, where we put funding to reconstruct major areas of roadway, that we do drainage improvements and those kind of things, yes. is, is a better application for a better bang funding. for our buck. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Would someone like to make a motion to pay the bills? I hereby move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and then incorporated into the full minutes of this meeting. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Powers? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. There are a number of reports from our municipal departments, <coughs> animal control, the clerk's office, construction, <coughs> division of EMS, finance, municipal court, MUA, tax collector, and upper township green team. All of these reports will be available upon request tomorrow morning at the clerk's office, but I'll make a motion to accept these reports. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. <coughs> Harry? So at this time, I'm going to open it up to the public. The public will have an opportunity to address the township committee. Please walk to the podium, state your name and your, reason, and your address, and your reason for approaching the township committee. <laughs> I'm Ron Soldano. This is my wife, Christine. We, we own the building that is uh, known as the Tuckahoe Vintage Goods, which is on the bend that everyone was referring to just now. Um, the post office is adjacent to that. It's in the same building, so there's two units there. And I, listening to the commentary, and we were discussing this the last uh, week or so about this crosswalk that possibly might be constructed, in that area on the bend, I'm not even sure that that's enough, to be quite frank with you. Because when you, if you drive west, you're approaching the bend, you're looking at the building in question that I just mentioned. The way the state redesigned the ingress and egress for the post office, I realized that that was probably a better way of doing it than what was there before, which was asphalt to asphalt. But now with the revitalization that's taking place, in that area, there's a lot of traffic. If you try to make the left turn into the post office, someone behind you is just about ready to rear end you. They're not anticipating you stopping, even if you have your brake lights on or you have your left hand turn signal on when you're heading west. So now you have to wait, stop for the traffic that's coming east on Route 50 in order to make the turn into the post office parking lot and her store. What is the feasibility and maybe you don't have an answer for this, what is the feasibility of having a flashing yellow light or, or, or an actual traffic light in that area as opposed to the crosswalk? Because I think that would solve a myriad of problems. This might be a start with the crosswalk, but I don't know that it's going to accomplish <coughs> the complete intended result of what everyone wants it to accomplish. It will help with pedestrian crossing, but it's not going to really help with vehicular traffic. I think, well, the biggest thing is speed, too. I mean, 
that's a huge issue there. And well, that's why I mentioned the light because nothing will slow traffic up faster than a, a stoplight. Well, to, to put, and, and I'm not saying that we couldn't at least petition for that, but to put a light um, on a state highway that probably has already been looked at pro as they were doing the revitalization, it, it's probably going to be difficult. I'm not saying it can't be done, but right. we'll certainly give it a shot. And we have no authority to put a light up ourselves, especially on a state road. Um, yellow light, you know, blinking light may make some sense. Um, they don't. I mean, they haven't really done anything. There's a fire station right there that has to pull out, and they, it's not like they put yellow lights there when they come out. So, you know, we, we it's kind of a, a unique situation in that. I don't think a village of Tacacacaho normally would have a state highway running through it like that. Um, so I, I'm not opposed to, to trying to, you know, do a resolution asking for that. Um, I just don't want to... Um, lead any misconceptions that we think it might actually get somewhere. It's See, the, the, tough. the thing, and I understand that, and the thing that, that what, when the state did all their improvements, the town didn't have the businesses revitalized as they are now. So things are somewhat different than when they made their studies and put the improvements in, which we, we like very much. I mean, they did a beautiful job. But now things have changed again in a positive way because now there's more people coming to the store. <clears throat> there are more people coming to some of the other businesses that have improved across the street. We have a log jam of people that are coming uh, down Route 50 and to Ocean City going east. It's, it's a complete different animal than what was even five years ago. This store was closed uh, when they did the uh, traffic study. It wasn't even open. It was closed for, I think, about uh, eight years before we bought it, and we bought it two years ago. Yeah, if, you look at, if you look at different towns, uh, you know, you, you, you take the Route 50 quarter, you take the Route 40 quarter, you're gonna find that this, there's towns that have the same issues that, that we're experiencing. You don't have to go too far, you start going to Maze Landing has the issue. You Elmer. go to Richland, you have the issue. You go all the way on Route 40 out in the Elmer, you have the same issue. We have conjet we have areas that are now, you know, used to be sleepy areas. Now they're get they're getting utilized and we still have uh, state highways going through there. So it's a matter of enforcement, matter of controlling the traffic flow and and the speed. And it's gonna it's gonna take some time. And especially with a pedestrian crossing, I mean, that it, it's it, we're going to have to have the state come in and, and put some signage and some lights in there to uh, not necessarily a traffic light, but warning lights, letting people know that there's a pedestrian. Yeah, my, my concern with the crossing is it, it may be uh, it sounds good in theory, but when you try to implement it right on that bend. It, it could be creating more of a problem than solving a problem, which is why I mentioned about the traffic light. And that's why state. we're going back to the state, because the state designed it. I mean, that's I know. the crosswalk came across there from the state. They're the ones that put it there. But that's the purpose of a lot of this funding that's going on now in the time, because they're going to study that. And then my understanding is it will be a red light when somebody's crossing if they give the full uh, pedestrian warnings. That, cause that's what's in Ocean City. That is I don't a, know if they're doing that light. full. I don't know if they're going to design a hawking light. I think what they're going to design is more the the flashing yellow lights for pedestrian crossing, more like what you have like up at on Rowan University along the Black Court. Right. Yeah, they're going to go by the state. The, the the study, study does. No, the study is going to determine what's appropriate. Right. The, the engineers are going to look at everything you're talking about. It doesn't mean we're, we're not going to disagree with them. It's just right. I understand. That's what they're professionals hired to do. Right. So, I, so I, I guess, yeah, and I guess what I'm saying is maybe that it could be looked at a little bit further, which is what I'm recommending, than beyond just the initial crosswalk. But I understand I, the state I, has the final say in what they're going to determine because it is a state highway. And not that I want to put it on, you'll see if they're, we want them to do a study, and you'll see them out there. Best advice I can give you, I'm sure you'll see them out there. Chew their ear. Yeah, I will. I will. I absolutely. Give me a call. I'll come up and chew your ear too. <laughs> no, I, 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 I will. We own other properties on state highways that I've spoken to the state about this as well, and, and we've gotten some good resolution to the things we wanted. So I certainly will. Yeah. 
Christine? Yeah, no, I would just like to say that we're starting to really try to revitalize the area. We started a second Saturday where we have all the merchants involved. And we do have um, merchants across the street from my, my store, and they're part of the process where they have to cross the street. The first, I think the first event only, we did have the state police there. They were kind enough to spend four or five hours there, and they actually crossed people across the street. And they had their lights on, and they made it very, very safe for our customers. Um, the last two events, they were not able to attend because they had other business. And I think I mentioned this in my email to um, Mayor Palumbo that we just were kind of watching from inside the store as we saw our customers crossing the street going, oh my God, I hope they make it. <laughs> because people are accelerating from Route 49 through the little town, getting to the bend, and it's just, it's crazy. It's something has to be done. Someone's going to get hurt. And we did just open the coffee shop, which is now part of our business as well. And we have people coming from the bank and people from the architect's office. And they really are trying to use and utilize that area. But sometimes we see them just turn around and go back where they came from. So I just really think it's a, an issue. And I, I will continue to, to grow the area and get businesses involved. And I just think it's going to be a wonderful little community. But it has to be safe. Well, couple, couple all of that, what we just said, with the fact that now the ingress and egress has changed for the post office. It's just a narrow uh, ingress coming uh, east on the, on the uh, west side of the property, and then the ingress and egress ex exiting the post office property as well. So when it was asphalt to asphalt, people pulled head on in, but then they would have to back out onto Route 50. I understand why they redesigned all that. But now you have this log jam of people coming out of the post office and you have all the things we just stated. It really creates a, a potential hazard, not only for pedestrians, but vehicles as well. Thank you. We, we will, um, I'm sure Paul got all that information and, you know, and we'll move forward with it. But not to keep harping on those signs, but you go through Elmer, they have the no trespassing sign because I, I was no, on the no crossing. Yeah, you know, right. Well, no. We want them to trespass. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. <laughs> yes. I mean, we're making steps and <coughs> it's not going to be solved overnight. Understood. We want to solve the problem. I mean, it, I actually happened to stop on the first Saturday and I was parked out front and I was asked to move my vehicle because of the post office. And, yeah. <laughs> and I got and I got out of there before the beer truck came. So, but it was a very nice. Event. Thank you. Thank and you. that's when Joan chewed my ear and got me on this. Oh man, if you're going to say anything, you got to go up the Wait. podium. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll exit. <laughs> <laughs> Calm her down. Calm down, Joe. <laughs> would, would anyone else like to uh, address the Township Committee? I'm Blanche Adams, um, 330 Woodbine Road in Steelman Town, and I'm representing the Upper Township Business Association tonight. Um, and just a shout out to Christine for all that you're doing in Tuckahoe. Um, it's wonderful. A food truck in Tuckahoe. Who would have thought that that could happen? Uh, biscotti, coffee. So you're doing a great job there, and it's wonderful to see. And thanks for bringing that uh, issue up, the safety of customers. I know that they're parking at the bank parking lot across the street, so um, it's that busy, which is a wonderful thing, that, that you've created this uh, destination place. So. Uh, it's good. Um, so I also wanted to thank Paul Dietrich for coming out to our business association meeting last Thursday and telling us, uh, giving a presentation on the bike path and the Harbor Road improvements. Appreciate your time squeezing that in between your other meetings. So uh, we appreciate that. Um, and that just brings up the topic of communication. So I was really glad to hear you talk about improved communication. Uh, I know the website, your township website, has evolved into a wonderful resource for the community. You you highlight our business events. Um, I can go on there and find out what's happening, you know, the minutes of the meeting. Any, anyway, it's just a wonderful thing. So when I saw this on the agenda tonight, uh, 
Larry's contract with, for the media consultant services, I was just um, happy to see that expansion of communication, but I was just wondering how it was all fitting in, because we have, um, I believe Suasion is doing like website communications, and then we have, I saw recently that um, an appointment was made for Mr. Bailey's for public uh, safety communication services, so I wasn't sure where that fit in, and then media consultant well, that, services. So, yes. well, I just wanted um, some clarification on that. Uh, uh, public communications under Mr. Bailey. Uh, Mr. Bailey is a consultant for us, and that's just strictly for public safety radio communications. Uh, fire, oh, okay. yeah, for fire, EMS, emergency management, um, and he handles uh, all of our radios. Uh, making sure, and even lifeguards, all of our radios, making sure that they're up to where they're supposed to be, and they're okay. tying into the other communities and the county. And our tower sites, okay. we, it's, it's not just radios, it's the tower sites, it's, which we have, what, seven or eight tower sites? Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and then those are coordinated, too, with another contractor, um, and that's all done through Mike. Okay. All right, good. So the scope of the media consultant so the, the media contract. Would be, so the media <clears throat> The opportunity for some events. I mean, Mr. Parlow's here. He's a one-man band here. Um, and, and what's happened is we're, we're, there's two newspapers are being delivered that say Upper Township, and very rarely is there anything other than what Mr. Barlow covers from these meetings is about Upper Township. Oh, so yeah, the idea is, is to take pictures when there's some event going on to start telling folks what's happening. Like the Memorial Day celebration. Do you, we're having a Memorial Day celebration. Goes from cemetery to cemetery, stops at Osprey Cove, that kind of stuff to get coverage for okay. that. Um, I mean, it, and, and there is, they, they, they do they do the best job they can do, but there's only one. You know, I mean, they have limited resources of people that can cover it. So, they, uh, w this is more of an experiment to see how much more we can, you know, give out more information. I mean, we have expanded our communication base way more in the past five years than we've ever done. And you know we've had some individuals say that you know I, I don't go on the website. I, you know we saw people saying we're not seeing what's going on. So you know we're trying to address as best we can, and that this is you know more of a you know an experimental I'm, situation. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, we'll move on. I mean, like about. the social media. If everybody's on social media, then obviously we're going to link hopefully the second Saturday. In it. Yeah, second like Saturday. On our social media page, and maybe get. A recovery store or that I mean I mean that's what that's what this is for okay great well um, that's exciting and we'll do our part to nudge the other papers to cover things and submit I'm, photos I, I, I don't want you to think of being critical of the papers it's just that you know we realize that I mean it, it's come along and in the past five years and we used to have three people here covering the meetings from different media groups and, and, and Bill has been very dedicated and common and we're, we're we don't have the three people we used to have, and so that used to cover a lot more opportunities. I mean, there's nothing in the press unless you know they, they copy the article uh, from the Sentinel or whatever, because mm -hmm. they're owned by the same people. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, they're not. Okay. The Gazette. So the Gazette. The Gazette. The Gazette. The Gazette. The Gazette. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. You work for the Sentinel. All right. <laughs> well, there's ne ever never you used to harm. Work for the <laughs> in increasing communication so there's never any harm in that so thank you for uh, for what you're doing in that regard thank you so anyone else like to address the challenge committee my name is Janet McMahon and I live on uh, 42 Oak Street in Marmora and I just have a, a question regarding the new um, uh, sign about the heritage um, affordable housing going up and how many units that's going to be, if there's a maximum number of people, what kind of access roads it's going to have, um, plans for the traffic, um, and then additional services like EMT and fire. So all I saw so far was the sign. I saw some, I was looking online and I saw some documentation from back in 2018 regarding the planning of it, but I, I'm just interested, I'm, I'm new to the area and I'm not too far from that. Um, that, and that's another curve in the road <laughs> with a lot of traffic going to be coming in. So uh, I'm just curious as to how many units and people and the, what the plan is for that thing. There's, I, I believe it's about 110 uh, mobile home sites that will be part of the, 
that community, they're not affordable. They're not I mean, all they're, affordable. They're not all affordable. There's only 20% of the units within it are meet the affordable uh, housing type of a document documentation. And they're, and, and they're they've actually received, the they're prefab sort of smaller homes, right? Yes. Like a mobile home park. But you're but you're looking at possibly an influx of another 200 people if you think of two people per that's, house at minimum. That's actually been to the planning and the zoning board or one of one or the other. The planning, both planning, the planning board. And the county is actually addressing some of the issues that's on 631 by the old Shoals Bend. I believe there's a host of issues. There's a lot of accidents. Um, is it is it like it's obviously not going to just be one road in and one road out, right? For that many people, they've got, got to have more than that. I, I forget the design whether there's one or two roads uh, going into that. I don't recall. Is I mean, there a design have, plan available? Have, yeah, you stop by the uh, the planning office and you can talk to um, this, you know Shelley or myself, and we'd be happy to show you the plans. I mean, it's been approved. The county's approved it. If they're liable only because it's county highway, the, our local planning board's approved. I personally haven't seen the plans myself because I mean I'm not on the planning board. But it's uh, it seems like a big influx of people right away for uh, EMTs, fire, it's traffic. Like, it's like any other project we've had in the township. Mm -hmm. I mean Osprey Cove, Osprey Point. It's just okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Larry Truly, 430 South Shore Road, Marmora. Um, you know, many times uh, people come up here and, and the committee gives out special recognition to the emergency services group and stuff. Um, and representing the senior center here in Upper Township, many times they, they come down for uh, um, an event, a life-threatening event. But there was one very close to home where my mother was celebrating her 93rd birthday and she fell and she broke her hip. Um, it was a life-threatening situation and how on a Friday night they answered in less than 12 minutes and the care that they gave my mother, I just personally wanted to thank your department and everybody there. I mean, it's wonderful having this service in Upper Township and, and I'd like to recognize you. So thank you very much. That's it. Okay. Anyone else? It appears that there's no further public comment. I want to thank those that um, took the time to come out and address the Township Committee. There's always a lot of good information that comes forward. And in fact, it usually um, initiates some further conversation with the Township Committee on things that we can you know, help out in any way we can. So thank you for those that um, were able to come and address the Township Committee. But at this time, I'm going to turn to uh, Committee McCoggins to entertain a motion to go into executive session. I hereby move that a resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the Township Committee to enter into an executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. Contract negotiation with CAPE Physician Associates and personnel. I also include in my motion the estimated time and the circumstances under which the discussion conducted in closed session can be disclosed to the public as follows. It is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Township Committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. With respect to employment and personnel matters, such discussions will be made public if and when formal action is taken or when the individuals involved consent that it can be made public. With respect to contract negotiations, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. Sorry. Mr. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Thank you all for attending this evening. Please drive safely home and have a great week. Yeah. <coughs>